Good afternoon and welcome to this session on past, present and future trends of tourism marketing. Things have changed quite a bit over the last few years in terms of uh, tourism internet marketing. One of the major things is how the consumer uh, makes their purchase and makes their buying decision. Back in the olden days, and of course when we talk about olden days, when we're talking about internet and internet marketing, we're talking last year or maybe two years ago, uh, those were the, the good old days and the olden days in terms of uh, internet marketing. But what used to happen is that the consumer would go online, they'd go to uh, Google and they'd do a few searches um, to help them find where they wanted to go or if they knew where they wanted to go. Um, what they where they wanted to stay or advice on um, attractions or what they were going to do in that particular destination. Um, today, and then what they would do is they'd visit the websites. If they liked what they saw there, uh, that would influence their buying decisions. Uh, but they would visit, and generally people still do visit a multiple, uh, at least three websites before they make that buying decision. So back in the olden days, people would go do the search, they'd go and visit a few websites, and from there they would make the, the buying decision and they would buy online or they would buy offline. And um, it used to be fairly simple. If you placed nice and high in the search results back in the olden days, uh, that really was half the battle, getting yourself to the top of the search results so that uh, when somebody did their search, they would find you, click out to your website, and uh, from there you had to make sure that the website was what they were looking for so that you would be the, um, their choice when they made that buying decision. Of course, things have changed quite a bit over the last, uh, over the last few years. And now what's happening is that uh, a lot of people are doing a lot more research before they make that buying decision. Um, they're visiting the websites. They're still doing the searches. They're still visiting the websites. Um, but they're doing a whole lot more. Uh, people are very aware of all of the travel rating sites and other sites where they can go to get a second opinion, a third opinion, a tenth opinion on, um, on their choice. So places like TripAdvisor, uh, those types of things are really having a big influence on getting that buying decision. Uh, people are visiting these sites, so you need to know what's happening. You need to know what people are saying about you. You need to, wherever you can, uh, make sure that you're getting uh, good reviews and good ratings in these types of in these types of sites. Um, also, people are going in places like Yelp. They're going in and asking uh, specific questions. They're asking for specific recommendations, and um, so it's really imp more important than ever. Um, people are looking for other people's opinion. They believe what they see on your website to a certain extent. They know that you're not going to say anything bad about your own operation, uh, about your own products or services. They know that you're not going to say anything bad. So they're going out to get that second opinion. Um, and you know, it, it really doesn't matter whether they know the person who's, who's talking about your operation or not. Uh, it seems like it's going to be somebody like them. And it, they'll believe that a lot more than they'll believe what's on your website and certainly a lot more than what's in your advertising. So these things are really, really important these days. So today what happens is uh, people, yes, they still do some search, they visit some websites, um, but they're going in and, and visiting the review sites to see what other people have to say about you. Uh, they're talking with their friends and they can talk with their friends uh, in volume uh, through Facebook and through other social media venues. So these things have had a major impact on uh, what influences the consumer's buying decision today? They go through all of these before they actually make the decision to buy. So it's more important than ever today for you to, um, for you to know what's being said about you. If you're not already using uh, the myriad of tools that are available today to find out what's being said about you, you need to be using them. Um, and there are a lot of these tools out there, a couple that a lot of people use. Uh, Google Alerts would be uh, a very popular one where you can go in, put in the name of your business or any keyword phrases that are uh, important to you, business owner, uh, business operation name, uh, keywords, location, those types of things. And uh, then you decide 
what type you want. Do you want to have a comprehensive? Do you want the uh, Google to go out and take a look for those words um, in blogs, in social media, uh, on websites, review sites, uh, you know, those types of things? Do you want it to check everywhere for you or only one specific place? How often do you want to be notified when your name is being used or the search terms that you've identified? Um, how many email results do you want to get? And you give your email address. And then you start getting on a, a daily basis if you've identified that's how often you want to receive these. You get to see who's talking about you, your business, your operation, and what they're saying. Really important because if somebody's saying something great about you, that's great. You might want to provide a link to that area where, um, where people can have access to the third-party comments. Um, if somebody is saying something negative about you, you want to follow up and make sure that you take care of that before it, uh, before it gets out of control. You want your, anybody who's going to see that comment, um, you want them to also see that you take care of business whenever there's something negative that's said about you, and you want to do that damage control. So uh, Google alerts are, uh, are very important these days. And of course, in social media, there are tools like social mention that again will give you information back on when your business name or any phrases that you've identified as being important are used throughout social media. So this is um, a change over the last couple of years in things that are, uh, that are really important for your, uh, for your internet marketing and for getting that business. Now, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And so with a number of things that I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about how things used to be and how they've changed somewhat, a little bit, or a lot uh, in today's marketing environment. To be successful online, you need to have three things. Uh, the first thing is you, you've got to have a good e-business model. Um, you've got to, when somebody wants to make a buying decision, you've got to make it easy for them, um, and that was always the case. Now, depending upon the type of business that you have, sometimes people are not buying what you're selling online. So, as an example, if you're a convention to visitors bureau, if you're a destination marketing organization, and you don't allow people to buy from your website, you might think that you're not selling online. However, you are selling your destination. And to get people to buy into your destination, uh, they need to do something when they visit your website or your web presence. They need to either, the next step in the buying decision for somebody who's no, who doesn't have a shopping cart per se or a reservation system online, you need to think about what's the next step in the buying decision. It might be, for those types of operations, it might be that they you want them to order the visitor's guide because you know that if they get the visitor's guide in their hand or uh, in digital format, that's going to influence whether or not they come to your destination. It might be that you want them to, to pick up the phone. It might be that you want them to watch a video. But there is always a next step in the buying process. Now, for those people that are selling online, for those people that do have uh, a reservation or a shopping cart online, um, then it used to be that you needed to have um, the ability to buy online done and done well. It needed to be easy to access, as few clicks as possible, and it needed to run smoothly. Um, and that was then. Now what's happening is that you're going for uh, not only getting that purchase, but you're going for a greater share of wallet. You want to do the upsell every single time that you've got uh, that you've got a buying customer. Here's a good example of a uh, of a hotel or a country inn in their buying process. Now it's not just buying a room. If you notice here, what you've got is you can select just a room, or you can select a room inclusive package. And, not, and in the just a room, you've got the opportunity, the fireplace room, the garden suite, the spa suite king, and you'll notice the different prices. Now, a lot of people, when they're given the option, they don't go for the lowest price. So there's an, they're, not buy, they're not making this buying decision just on price. They're looking to have a great experience. Uh, they're 
this is not a, a vacation is not something that they do every day so they're looking to have the greatest experience possible and if that means spending a few extra dollars not a problem so here you give people the opportunity uh, and you and yourself the opportunity you're doing the upsell um, notice as well enhance your stay uh, you can order wine strawberries a whole range of things that you can uh, enhance the experience so this is an opportunity today or an example of where businesses are going for the upsell they're going for that greater share of wallet another way that this is happening a lot is in offering people packages and specials the package is always more than the basic purchase and you're looking to provide them with the greatest experience and when you sell all these things together they get the best deal so what you're looking for today is to increase the share of wallet uh, not just to to make the buying decision to get them to make that buying decision and to get the initial purchase you're looking to get uh, the initial purchase but also the greater share of wallet to increase the value of every single sale that you make online so we've got the e-business model the next thing that you need to have is you need to have the web presence you've got to have the right business model and you've got to have the white the right web presence and of course back in the olden days uh, the web presence was the uh, was the website but of course that's changed a little bit as well in the last few years your web presence now um, will include your website it will include your blog if you've got one it'll include your Facebook page your YouTube channel any other means uh, that somebody can know a bit more about you and that can make the that can influence their buying decision so when we're talking about uh, being successful online today you need to make sure that you're looking at your web presence in totality you're looking at every single touch point that you have with the uh, with the individual customer and all of these things need to be consistently consistently branded the first thing that is uh, that's really important in your web presence is graphic design and graphic design was always important was always important for your website it's also now important for all of your social media and for your blog um, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression um, you need to make sure that when somebody visits your website you have them at hello the website looks like it's been updated that you're keeping up with consumers expectations that uh, that it looks like uh, with the content that you've got on the site as well that you are keeping current um, again you want to make sure that your graphic design uh, the colors the graphics the branding is consistent over all of your web presence so you've got the same branding and graphic design uh, with your website as you've got with your blog as you've got with your Facebook page as you've got with your YouTube channel as you've got with your Twitter background so you want to make sure that you that that is consistent these days um, the next thing that's important has always been important uh, is that you want to make sure that you've got the search engine optimization done and with the search engine optimization because still you've got so many people doing their research through the search engines yes people are still are going into social media and asking questions and doing their searches there but the the uh, Google and the other search engines still uh, very very important so with your search engine optimization uh, you want to look at the search engine optimization of your website or sites of your blogs of your social media uh, and these things can work hand in hand or you can actually use them to influence the search engine optimization of the other so for example with your social media posts on your Facebook page or on other people's Facebook pages or in the groups in uh, Facebook as an example uh, you can provide links out to your website which will impact the search engine optimization of your website so you can do some good cross uh, SEO but you also have today today look at the SEO for not only your website you've got to work on the SEO for your blogs for your social media uh, so you've got a lot more work to do now um, the way that uh, and it, it's interesting it's so important to get these basics down pat because 
today what I'm finding is that a lot of people um, are jumping into social media before they've got their website done and done properly. And if you think about it, what are they doing there? Uh, they're going out and building their Facebook page and their YouTube channel and, and doing all their tweets. Uh, and why are they doing that? They're doing that because they want to do more business online. Where are they going to do that business? Quite often, they're sending people from those channels back to their website. And if the website, which is the foundation, is not done properly, they're going to miss out on getting the conversion of that website visitor into a paying customer. So this is why it's important to have these basics uh, done and done properly. In, in terms of the uh, search engine optimization, there is a formula for being successful with the search engines. And uh, it really consists of three parts. I'm not going to go into this in a great amount of detail because we're going to do a whole series on the search engine optimization, how the search engines work, and how you can improve your points for all of these different areas. But just as a real quick synopsis, the, uh, the formula for the search engine optimization really hasn't changed in terms of what you've got to pay attention to. The individual elements have changed, but where the points are coming from has not changed. You get points from the keyword, the use of the keyword on your website, on your blog, in your, in your social media. The search engine is looking for the keyword phrase that's being searched on and they're looking for it in a range of different places. So the keyword points, and that, of course that's done on a page by page basis. So you need to make sure that every page on your website is optimized for these search engines, that you've got a consistency of focus on one keyword phrase, that it's in the page title, it's in the headers, it's in the tags, it's in all the different places that the search engine is looking for it, and at that on a page by page basis. The, uh, the second piece that's in the formula is in the link points, and the search engine is looking for how many other sites out there are providing a link to your website. Now, this has always been important. However, now we've got a whole lot of extra opportunities for you to get additional links to your site and, an, an adi and additional links that are really well developed because now added to the links from other sites, we also now have the links pointing to your site from social media. So the links that are coming to your site from your social media, so from your Facebook page, from your tweets, from your um, YouTube channel, but also the links from other people's pages and other people's social media. So you've got additional opportunities here to help yourself uh, on the link uh, on the link opportunity. And then the third piece is the miscellaneous points. And with the miscellaneous points, there are many things that come into play in this, and when we go through the search engine optimization webinars, we'll cover, uh, we'll cover all of these. But in the miscellaneous points, there are things that you can control. Things like the search engine gives more points the more frequently you update your website. Once you know that, you will update your website more often. Um, other things that you can control in the miscellaneous points, things like how long you own your domain name for into the future. Once you know that, you go into GoDaddy or wherever you purchase your domain name, and instead of buying it one year at a time, you'll buy it for 10 years into the future, knowing that that's going to give you extra points in the SEO. Um, things like coding errors, that's under your control. You can use tools, lots of free tools online, to tell you if you've got any coding errors, typos, uh, you know, any HTML coding errors on your site, and you can change those. Um, the amount of traffic to your site, of course, you always want to have a lot of traffic to your site, uh, but knowing that in the miscellaneous points for the search engines, the more traffic you've got, the more uh, points you get, uh, you know, that, that will have an influence on how much traffic building you do to your site. Now, of course, the miscellaneous points also has things that you can't control. Things like the age of your domain. You can't, you can't change that. If you started that domain in 1997, that's a fact. You can't change it. Um, so there are things in the miscellaneous points area that you can and cannot control. Um, with the search engine optimization, 
there is a process for this. You know, you need to know how the search engines rank, know what there are points available for, uh, because the site that has the highest score is the one that appears top in the organic search results. Um, you will, it's important, the keyword phrases that you choose to optimize your site for always has been. Very important that you allocate those phrases to specific pages on your site and not try to get all your important keywords on every single page. That's probably the most often missed opportunity in terms of search engine optimization. Very important to populate each page appropriately. So these are things that have always been important for SEO. The next area is the link popularity and link relevancy. These are things that have changed a little bit. Uh, certainly the number of links and the, um, the uh, quality of those links, the sites that they're coming from, those were always important. But now you've got a lot of additional opportunities to create additional links to your site. And when you know how to optimize those links, uh, again, it can greatly influence the SEO of your site. And as we discussed, the miscellaneous points, another area that, um, uh, that has changed a little bit. Um, the next thing that's, uh, that is important in terms of basics for the website is the repeat traffic and getting people to visit your website more often. The more often people visit your website, uh, the, the more your branding is reinforced, the more people get to know you and people do business with people that they know and trust. Uh, the more often they visit the website, the more likely they are to give you permission to send them email. The more, the more likely they are to link out to your social media and become a fan on Facebook or a follower on Twitter or any other social media that you're using. Uh, the more often that they visit the website, the more your brand is reinforced, the more likely you're going to be first to mind when they go to make that buying decision. So repeat traffic has always been important, but there are some changes that have happened over the last couple of years. When you have a strategy to generate repeat traffic, it's important now that not only you have repeat traffic strategies for your website, but that you also have repeat strategies, repeat traffic strategies for your blog and for your social media. Um, it doesn't happen by chance. So you need to think about the repeat traffic generators that you use, why you're using them, how you can use them better. So examples of repeat traffic generators would be, you know, specials or packages that you've got on your website. These can generate repeat traffic. Uh, if you add new videos to your website on an ongoing basis, if you've got coupons that change over time, uh, you're announcing events or what's happening in your area, these are all things that can encourage people to come back to visit your website. But you see, back in the olden days, it seemed to be enough just to have packages on your site. But today, just having the repeat traffic generator doesn't cut it. You really need to leverage, leverage, leverage. You need to maximize uh, every single repeat traffic generator that you have on your website. So let's take a look at, uh, at a few of these. Um, here's the Miami website and they've got a, they've got a photo contest. So a photo contest can be, um, you know, can be a great repeat traffic generator getting people back to see additional photos or to submit your own photos. Um, they also have here, they've got featured events. Notice that it's got featured events. These are the things that are coming up in uh, the next few weeks. So when people know that you've, that you've got updated events on the website and uh, they can see that it's up to the minute, they, that's, that's subliminally telling them, you know, come back and check this more often uh, because there's always going to be the latest information uh, available on this site. Another thing is special offers. Special offers will get people back to your website as long as you change them on a regular basis. Make them something that is, uh, that is of interest. Use text that really grabs their attention. Uh, use calls to action. There are all kinds of ways to leverage every repeat traffic generator. Um, you know, notice that they've got share this. There is something new that wasn't there a few years ago. Uh, people would just have the special offer. Now you're encouraging people to share this special offer and to tell other people about it. We'll talk more about the share this uh, when we talk about viral marketing. But today, the repeat traffic generators, number one, you need to use the appropriate repeat traffic generator. Think about your target market and which repeat traffic generators 
are going to be most appropriate for them, which are going to be, um, you know, if you if you're a travel agency and you're selling crystal cruises that are selling for, you know, uh, seventy five, a hundred thousand dollars a pop, a coupon for ten dollars off is not going to be attractive to that target market. So you need to use appropriate repeat traffic generators, and then you need to leverage, leverage, leverage. So um, any repeat traffic generator that you choose, you leverage by changing the content on an ongoing basis and letting your customer know, or your potential customer know, how often you change it. So instead of just having packages, it would be December packages or this week's packages. Let people know how often you change because the brain absorbs that and recognizes, okay, so if this is December, they're going to be new, new packages for January and February. If this is this week's packages, then I should check back next week because this is going to be updated then. If you just have packages, uh, there's, there's, there's nothing there for them to absorb to know how often that's going to be changed, uh, when that's going to be changed, and to subliminally tell them when to check back. Um, every repeat traffic generator provides an opportunity for permission marketing. And getting that person's name and email address is gold. So look at the repeat traffic generator and make sure that you leverage it with permission marketing. Hey, we've got new packages all the time, or we've got new specials or coupons. Join a re-club and you'll receive this as it changes. As we have new packages and specials, you'll be the first to know. Just join a re-club. So leverage your repeat traffic generator with permission marketing. Leverage it with viral marketing. Uh, we'll talk more about this in this program, but uh, people generally are not going to make that buying decision by themselves. If it's a, uh, a golf getaway, uh, generally they're going to be going with somebody else. So think about incorporating viral marketing with your repeat traffic generator. If it's, if it's the special, if it's a coupon, if it's a, pa if it's a package, um, you know, make it easy for them to be able to tell a friend about that particular package or that particular special. Again, we'll talk about this when we talk about viral marketing. Uh, the share is another way of getting people to share that information. We'll talk about that as well. Um, think about the repeat traffic generators and how you can partner with other sites to get more exposure. If you've got, uh, if you've got a special or promotion, think about not only having it on your website, but who else is targeting the same target market that you are that your special or your promotion would be good content for their site as well. Always think about calls to action. Tell people what it is that you want them to do. Sign up today for this purchase today. Sign up now. Uh, get that call to action in there because when that call to action is there, is there, they think about it. Sometimes they take the action, sometimes they don't, but at least they've thought about it. So what you want to do is Back in the olden days, you had to have the repeat traffic generator. Today, you want to leverage, leverage, leverage. You want to maximize the opportunity of getting people to take the specific action that you want them to take, but also you want to maximize it with getting them to do what you want them to do, getting them to join your e-club, getting that name and email address, uh, getting them to, uh, to share that promotion through their social media. So again, you need to think about what it is that you want them to do with that repeat traffic generator, why you've got it there, and how you can maximize the marketing opportunity. Um, you want to make it, uh, it real nice and easy for them. Here's an example of the leverage. Um, become part of Austin's Insiders Club and take advantage of special offers. You see, the special offer was the repeat traffic generator. They're leveraging this with permission marketing. So become part of Austin Insiders Club and take advantage of special offers made available only to our members. Join now, call to action. Join now and you'll get instant access to discounts of some of the best Austin attractions. Check out just a few in the list below. So check out just a few in the list below gives them the opportunity for them to see what the discounts are and giving, the, giving them a reason to join their e-club. So think about how you can maximize every single thing that you do on your website. The next thing that's really important is permission marketing. Permission marketing is getting people to give you permission to send them email on an ongoing basis. Um, with permission marketing, you want to make sure that you do it right. Back in the olden days, it was a matter of 
uh, you know, join our newsletter and giving them an opportunity to put in their email address. Well, things have changed, and you need to make sure that you're that you're really maximizing this opportunity on your website before you start sending the throngs of traffic to the site through your social media and through your other internet marketing efforts. So uh, here's an example of an e-club done very well. This is permission marketing. Uh, Meyer Hotels. Join our e-club and save. Join our e-club and save. So join our e-club is a call to action. Save is the reason why they want to do it. Notice above in the graphic, it's join our e-club today and receive 15% off your next day with us. They're providing an incentive for people to join that e-club. And notice it says join your e-club today. It's going to say today, join your e-club today, tomorrow, next week, next month. However, when the brain sees join your e-club today, it thinks, oh, I better do it today. So you want to maximize the opportunity uh, that you've got with permission marketing by providing the incentive, providing the call to action, and creating a sense of urgency. So join a e-club today and receive 15% off your next day with us. Here are some of the benefits. So here are the reasons why you want to join our e-club. Priority notification of package specials, special discounts and benefits, notice of upcoming events, exclusive offers with printable coupons, exclusive offers. So these are offers that are available only to our e-club members. Um, th these, these things are very, very important as well as making it nice and easy for them to be able to sign up and join your e-club. Notice that they're asking for the first name, last name, email address, and zip code. So they're not asking for a ton of information, they're asking for the bare minimum. First name, always important. I can't believe how many websites I still see where they're just asking for the email address. You need to ask the first name because that's what goes into your mail list software. That allows you to do the personalization of the email that's going to go out to everybody who is a member of your e-club. Personalization, critically important today because you know yourselves, when you get an email that says, Dear Friend, you know it's bulk email and it's almost an automatic delete. If you get an, a message that says, Hi Susan, Hi Ashley, Hi Carolyn, Hi Chuck, then you read further. It's personalized. It's, you feel that it's, a, that it's a message just for you. I mean, quite often we know that it's not just for us, but we still appreciate it a whole lot more than a dear friend. So you want to make sure that not only do you have permission marketing, but that you're doing it right. So a few of the things that have changed. One of the things with permission marketing is have it above the fold. Above the fold meaning that people don't have to scroll down. This is a really, really important piece. Having the most important things above the fold, critically important. I can't believe how many websites I go out and visit and they've got links to their Facebook and links out to, their, to Twitter, but it's right down at the bottom of the page in a little tiny uh, in a little tiny uh, icon and people have to scroll down to even know that you've got social media. So it's so important that you have, if you want them to become uh, a fan or, you, or a person who likes or you want them to become a follower, uh, you want to make sure that these things are prominent on your website. So have things above the fold. Um, permission marketing is very important. Have that above the fold. You also want to have it on every single page a link to your e-club sign up on every single page because when you do internet marketing properly, when you do your SEO properly, people will be coming into pages other than your home page. When you do outbound marketing and you're telling people about a special or promotion, they're coming into the page, the landing page that has that special or promotion. So it's really important that you think about those things when you're thinking about the most important things and what you want people to do when they visit your website. So permission marketing every single page. Again, do the social media links on every single page. Uh, I'd say fully, at least, at least 50, if not, if not 70 percent of sites that I visit have their links to their social media only on the home page. So that is assuming, and assuming incorrectly, that everybody is going to go to your home page because that's not the way that things work. So you need to make sure that you've got those links to every single page. If you want to see a good example of that, go to my website, susansweeney.com. Uh, it's very prominent on my site that I want people to visit me on the web. 
And if you look at every other page on the website consistently place, there's a link to my social media on every single page of the website. And it's not a little tiny thing because it's important to me. You make it, uh, you make it prominent. Um, with permission marketing these days, again, always make sure that you've got that first name. I mean, this has been um, very important for a number of years. You need to make sure that you're using good mail list software. Uh, you know, no longer cuts it to be able to try and do your outbound marketing through uh, Outlook or anything like that. You've got to have really good mail list software, good robust software that has the latest features that allow you to, um, to maximize your permission marketing. Uh, one critical piece is a spam checker. Before you send out any outbound email to a list, you want to make sure that you run it through a spam checker to make sure that it doesn't get picked up as spam and uh, detected as spam and therefore not be enabled to, uh, to go through to the intended recipient. Um, again, you want to have an e-club. You want to, don't say join our newsletter because signing, signing up for a newsletter will not allow you to send them other information, your coupons, your specials, etc. So you want to have an umbrella permission uh, e-club and you want to sell the sizzle. Let them know why they want to join your e-club. Um, I expect that in the uh, you know in the next round of legislation, you probably will not be able to send people anything other than what they ask to receive. So, if you if they ask to receive your newsletter, that's all you'll be able to send them. If they if they ask to join your e-club, and your e-club says that as a member you'll get our coupons, specials, discounts, newsletter, and other great information, that gives you umbrella permission to be able to send them all of those things uh, even after the change in legislation. So very important that you have an e-club. It also creates a sense of membership and exclusivity and, and member-only benefits and those types of things. And again, with that, use that same technique in your social media. So you offer specials only to your fans. Uh, if you go out to our eLearning U uh, Facebook uh, page, you'll see that we've got opportunities there uh, that are available only to our fans. And um, Kara's done a, an absolutely fabulous job of this. If somebody goes into our Facebook page and they're not a fan, they will not have access to those. They'll have to sign up to become a fan to get access to it. If you are a fan automatically, our Facebook page knows that, and you can click on the, um, on the uh, Special Offers tab, and you've got immediate access to it. So you want to you want to create that exclusivity and special uh, offers only for those people that are part of your e club, part of your social media, uh, and then give them an incentive to join. Um, you know, give them a reason to take that action today. Have use those calls to action. So things have changed somewhat in the uh, in the permission marketing element as well. Here's a here's an example of uh, the Freeport e club. Uh, again, real nice and easy. Email address first name. They don't even ask for the last name because you don't really care. You don't, you know, you don't need that, that last name unless you're going to be sending them out some snail mail, which very, very rarely happens these days. Uh, but the first name critically important so that you can customize and personalize every single email that you send out. Um, here's an example of a, uh, of a spam checker. And when you run your email through the spam checker, it will give you a score. If your score is 5.0 or higher today, then you don't send it out because it will be uh, filtered out by a lot of spam, spam filters. So when you see what score you've got, you can also see how to reduce that score. So for example, if it has a, a high shouting markup, that means that you've got too many bowls, too many exclamation marks, too many large fonts. What you do is you go back in and you edit your message run it through the spam checker again, and if it's down to 1.5 or something like that, then it's okay to send it out. Uh, but very important because if you don't run it through a spam checker, you don't know what your score is. You don't know how, how, how many people of your database are going to be able to actually access that particular email. So the spam checker, again, today is something that's, uh, that's really important. With permission marketing as well, um, today you want to be able to build a profile of everybody that you've got in your database so that you can do dynamic personalization. Um, dynamic personalization is something that's happening more and more often. Dynamic personalization being that if you're sending out specials, as an example, 
not everybody gets the same specials. With dynamic personalization, what happens is you build a profile of everybody in your database over time. An example would be with a client of ours that we introduced dynamic personalization, what happened uh, is that we sent out a number of uh, specials. And uh, this particular resort had a uh, golf target market, it had um, a spa, and it had family vacationers. And so what we did for the first few months was we sent out um, a couple of family getaway specials, a couple of golf uh, specials, and a couple of uh, spa specials. And then based upon the individual, if they clicked on the spa, it went back into the database and identified in their profile that they were interested in spa. If they clicked on the golf special to find out more in the details, it went into the software and ticked off and said, this person's interested in golf. So we built the profile of the individuals over time. So now with dynamic personalization, what we're able to do is when we send out specials, not only does it personalize uh, the message that goes out to the individual based upon, hi, Susan, Chuck, Carolyn, everybody, each message is, is uh, an individual unique message based upon the first name, but it's also unique and personalized to their priorities and preferences. So Denise might get uh, two specials and it might have one family getaway and one golf. Chuck might get two specials that are only golf because that is the only thing that he has checked off that he's interested in. So dynamic personalization is really important and going to be more and more important into the future um, because you know yourself when you get an email and you open it up from a particular organization three or four times and it's never anything that you're interested in uh, the next time you get an email from them you're less likely to open that particular email on the other hand if it's always relevant if it's always the stuff that you're interested in uh, the brain knows that and it stores that information. So the next time you get an email from that particular organization, the more likely you are to open it. Um, another thing that's changed in, uh, with permission marketing is that more and more of the, uh, of the good software allows you to use uh, a variety of channels. Um, and you can also, within the body of your email and within the, uh, the features and the content of your messages, you can extend the reach through social media, you can encourage people to tell a friend or forward the message to a friend. So you want to take full advantage of all of the content of the message that you have going out to everybody in your database as well. So those are things that have, uh, that have changed a little bit over time. Now, I hear a lot of people saying, well, you know, email's dead and everybody is just using social media and uh, so, you know, we, we're, we're going to drop the whole email thing. Um, you need to be very, very careful. Email is not dead. As a matter of fact, sometimes uh, it may be more important now than ever. One very, very important thing with permission marketing is that when you ha are building your, um, your Twitter, Twitter followers and your, your, your Facebook fans, um, you also want to get those people into your e-club. You want to get them also into, into your e-club. And the reason why it's so important these days is because if they're uh, your Facebook fans, um, if they're your uh, Twitter followers, you only have so much control. If you get them into your e-club, you've got the name, you've got the email address, and you've got permission to be able to send them directly uh, specific emails. Uh, and just because you've got people uh, following you today on, uh, on Facebook, Facebook may not be uh, the be-all, end-all next year or the year after. And if you don't keep up with, if you don't get those people into your permission-based database, um, when people are no longer using Facebook or no longer uh, using Twitter because they've moved on to the next best thing, which, which always happens, you know, you heard it here first, uh, then you still have uh, an ability to be able to contact them, an ability to be able to uh, stay in touch and let them uh, know that you've moved on to, uh, to uh, the next best thing. So again, real important that you get everybody in your database because then you are in control. The next, uh, the next thing that's important is viral marketing. And again, it's something that's been important for years, but we've got new opportunities uh, with viral marketing. 
uh, with viral marketing, it used to be important just from your website, you know, tell a friend about this special or tell a friend about this promotion. But it's amazing how many people never ever caught on to this opportunity. With viral marketing done properly on your website, you provide the opportunity for people to be able to tell a friend about a special, tell a friend about a coupon, tell a friend about a package that you've got. And people are not making that vacation planning or making that vacation decision on their own they're going to be going with somebody else quite often. So you need to make it real nice and easy for them to be able to tell a friend about the package or the special or the promotion or the coupon that you've got. Uh, the more people that know about what you've got on your website, um, and, and it's so easy, you just provide the technology on your website and your visitors are the ones that spread the word. And when your visitor is the one that spreads the word, um, then it's the information is coming from somebody that they know and trust. So they're going to rely on it a whole lot more than if they just saw that you had that particular special or coupon. So with viral marketing, uh, again, it's important on your website, but also you need to look at the viral opportunities that you've got through your blog your, and all of your, all of your different social media. Um, with, the, uh, with viral marketing, it's changed a little bit in that it used to be only micro only uh, that you had the opportunity from your website for people to be able to tell a friend. Tell a friend about the content on your website. And this is the type of viral marketing that used to be used. You put in the friend's name and the friend's email address, your name, your email, and then the message. And when the message went out to their friend, it uh, looked like it was coming from the sender's name. So they're much more likely to open it, uh, much more likely to read it and much more likely to pay attention because it seemed to be an a non-biased third-party recommendation of what you've got. Uh, so this was the micro level and again still very important and very important that you do it properly, uh, that you use the right technology that does that personalization uh, and, then, and then also that you um, provide the link back to the specific page on your website that they were referencing. You don't go back to the home page. If they were telling a friend about a package you send them back to the page that has that specific package. Nobody wants to tell a friend uh, about your site. They don't care about telling a friend about your site. They do care about telling a friend about the coupon, the package, the special. So make sure that you really go down into that, uh, into that micro level and that you use good technology so that it allows them to personalize the message. Where, where things have changed, uh, now the viral opportunities, you can make it very easy for people to be able to share content on your site uh, with all of their uh, Facebook friends, with all of their Twitter followers. So you can um, make it super, super easy and uh, a lot of these tools are available for free for you to be able to get these buttons online. So you want to also take advantage of these macro uh, viral marketing opportunities. The next thing that's, uh, that's real important is the great content. Um, you know, again, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression with, uh, with the visitors to your website. And they really need to see that you are keeping up with uh, what's happening in the industry, keeping up with their expectations. Uh, and those are changing, it seems like, daily online these days. So one of the things that you want to have is you want to have great interactivity. The more interactivity you've got on your site, uh, the longer they stay. The more they interact, the more they, they uh, are participating on your website. So you want to create some good um, targeted interactivity with your site. So things like uh, virtual tours, iBrochures, interactive maps, uh, videos, or lots of widgets that allow uh, interactivity. Um, a few examples. This here is a, an iBrochure. Now, there's lots of technology, and we'll talk about that uh, in the session that I'm going to do on uh, great tools and gadgets. I'll be showing you all kinds of different uh, resources and tools that are available online for you to be able to provide great interactive content on your site. Um, but the um, uh, iBrochure, interactive brochure, it looks like a, uh, a magazine, and you can turn page by page by page, or you can click to go to a particular section. But with an iBrochure, it can be on your website, uh, it can be uh, sent by email, there are all kinds of things that you can do with an interactive brochure. But the interactivity brochure, uh, where people can access a lot of information, seeming like uh, a magazine on your website, uh, encourages them to stay longer, to visit more pages, to get more information. And that's what it's uh, all about. 
Here's another example of a uh, great example of interactivity. This is uh, the Austin CVB. They've got Austin Music. And uh, one of the big attractions to Austin is that you've got a lot of uh, songwriters and a lot of good uh, a lot of good music. So they've got on their website that you can actually listen to uh, a number of different music selections um, from musicians that are in Austin. So uh, again, some interactivity. They also give you the opportunity to actually buy uh, these tracks online. Um, here's another uh, great interactive element. Um, this is the the Wowjet uh, Madden Media has uh, has developed. But what it allows you to do is to give people access to all of your different media, your videos, your photos, your um, uh, your audio files from one place. What happens is, the, it, this takes a very little real estate. If you look at the Columbia Moore and then the green area, uh, what can happen is that that little tiny piece at the top can be on every single page of your website, therefore giving people access to they have to click on more and see the drop down to see the videos, photos, etc. And uh, what this allows you to do is uh, provide access to all of your multimedia on every single page without it having to take up a whole lot of real estate on the page. So this is uh, another cool tool uh, in terms of providing access on every page or on select pages of your website to all of your, uh, all of your multimedia. Um, another interactive element that's, uh, that's cool these days is uh, the interactive maps. And the interactive maps can be used for a geographic location or they can be used within a geographic location or within, within an operation. You can have a, an interactive map of a shopping mall showing where all the individual stores are or where all the ladies stores are or where all the jewelry stores are. Um, in this case here it's used so that you can click on the left hand side you see the categories. So if I was looking for uh, just bed and breakfasts, I would just click on bed and breakfast and then only the bread and breakfast would be highlighted on this particular map. I could be looking only for the attractions and then only the attractions would appear on the map. So these interactive maps are great content for anybody who's looking at going to your destination. Uh, great interactivity, they can see what's around, what's close by, uh, can influence their buying decision on where they stay, what they do when they get there. So interactive maps are great uh, interactive content. Here's another uh, example of what's happening today. Uh, this is the Vegas uh, CBB website. And what they've got is you can personalize um, your own experience whenever you go to visit the website. This is My Vegas. And if you notice down below with My Vegas, you can create a, a, a network of My Vegas friends. So you can connect with uh, other Vegas friends. You can share Vegas photos, customize your profile page, generate a new Vegas nickname. Uh, so they're allowing you to personalize the experience every single time you go to that particular to that particular site. Um, lots of uh, lots of changes uh, in terms of interactivity. Um, another thing that's uh, that's changed or that is very very popular these days is the uh, the mobile access and a lot of destination marketing organizations are uh, participating in these types of uh, mobile applications where um, any mobile user can have access to the uh, the, the mobile version of um, what's going on in their area it can provide a link out to the accommodations attractions dining and even within this um, when you look at the uh, particular accommodations uh, the specials and promotions can be embedded in this particular application. Uh, so there's lots of uh, lots of changes happening in terms of uh, how people are accessing the information about your destination, what's influencing um, whether or not they go to your destination, and what's influencing what happens when they get there. Um, so for individual uh, operators, for hotels, etc., they should know about these things and then click through and see what does it say about your accommodations? Is there a call to action? Is the text that's used there the absolute best that you can use to get to influence the buyer to choose you? Um, are you updating your specials and promotions on an ongoing basis? Are you taking advantage of all of the opportunities that these technologies, uh, that these technologies provide? 
So these are things that are um, that are, are you know happening in this ever changing world. Um, I mentioned before about the integrating the social media into your website. Um, with a lot of uh, sites, they have just on the home page and in a very very tiny small icon or graphic. They've got the uh, the Facebook, the uh, the LinkedIn, the Twitter, whatever uh, social media they're participating in the links. Um, if this is important to you, and it should be, uh, if this is important to you, you want to make sure that you give it uh, the appropriate space, the location, and the call to action, and um, you know everything that you can to influence the action that your visitor takes. So uh, with this one here on the Philadelphia site, find us on Facebook. Um, they've got 22,506 people who like Philadelphia. Uh, and then they provide the opportunity right from their website. This is much better than having just the little tiny uh, Facebook icon. Uh, one example. Uh, another example, you always want to make sure that you provide it on every single page of your website in a consistent location above the fold, provide a call to action. Um, different organizations are doing um, uh, different degrees of, um, of uh, emphasis on this. Phoenix has done a fabulous job. What they've got is the social club. So when you click on the social club, you get access to all of their uh, social media. So on the uh, Facebook area, you can see uh, the latest posts. On Twitter, you can see the latest tweets. Uh, you can also then click on the like, click on the follow, um, and you can become a follower, you can become a fan um, of their different social media right from their website. And people get a chance to see what type of tweets will they receive, what type of uh, posts are they going to see in the social media. Um, the same thing, access to the YouTube, access to the Flickr photos. So there's lots of great information here on this one page. A fabulous example of the uh, of the integration of their social media on the website. Um, another uh, another piece that's that's really uh, changing the landscape these days is Flickr. Um, photos are very very important to the um, to the tourism industry and to a lot of industries. Uh, Flickr provides a great opportunity for you to uh, upload your photos to Flickr. Uh, make your changes and edits to those photos within Flickr, um, you know, cropping, uh, getting red eye out, uh, those types of things. And there are lots of tools that allow you to integrate your photos from Flickr into your website. So back in the olden days when you had a photo gallery that may or may not have looked professional, uh, with these third-party applications, most of them for free, you can have an absolutely fantastic uh, photo gallery or use of different photos on your on your website through using uh, Flickr. And again, we're going to do a whole session on Flickr. Uh, we're going to do many sessions on all the different social media. So these things we'll get into the details and the um, uh, you know the, the the minute details and how to maximize the opportunities within these different social media as we go through those sessions as well. Now. Uh, the third piece in being successful online is you've got to have the right e-business model, the right website, and you've got to have traffic. Uh, you don't have traffic, you don't do any business. You know, you miss any one of these three elements and you cannot be successful online. You can have um, a great website and a great e-business model, but if you don't have any traffic, you don't have anybody visiting your website, you're not going to do any business. Uh, you can have a ton of traffic to your website, but if you've got a terrible website, they're not going to stay. Uh, you send the traffic and then they don't like what they see, the graphics are not updated, it looks like an old tired site, well then they just click away. So you need to make sure that you've got all three things done and done properly. This has always been the case. What has changed though is uh, what the consumer's expectations are, how you maximize, how you leverage those types of things. Uh, but again, I can't emphasize enough that before you get into um, doing all of the uh, social media and spending a lot of your time in the social media, make sure that the foundation, make sure that the website is ready for that traffic. Make sure that the website is designed to get people to tell a friend, to join your e-club, uh, to convert them from a website visitor into a paying customer or somebody who's decided to come to your particular uh, destination. And with traffic, we have, uh, you know, there are so many traditional ways that still work. 
your outbound marketing uh, by email, um, participating in uh, getting links from other people's sites that generates traffic, but also helps you with your SEO, uh, search engine optimization, uh, paying for advertising, whether it be through a search engine or through other sites, um, integrating your content into other heavily trafficked sites that have the same target market that you have, uh, media relations, participating in electronic magazines. Um, you know, my book, 101 Ways to Promote Your Website, talks about all of the traditional ways of generating traffic, which still work today, as well as uh, in the latest version, I've updated it with um, chapters on Facebook and LinkedIn and, and uh, blogs and uh, Flickr and YouTube and all of those other ways now that you have in addition to. They're not instead of, they are in addition to. So again, it's, it's a very confusing world out there uh, in terms of social media. A lot of people are just jumping on the bandwagon because they say, well, that's what uh, everybody else is doing. You really need to step back, make sure that your website is ready to, to, uh, to, to get that customer and to convert that visitor into a customer uh, before you start driving all that traffic to your site. And when you do decide to um, how you're going to generate traffic, number one, still consider the traditional as well as all of the new uh, social media opportunities that are provided. And again, you need to uh, have a strategy on how to do these things. Uh, with social media, you know, it's just there are so many opportunities. You kind of wonder, oh my God, where do I go? Where do I start? And even within these uh, different social media, you take Facebook as an example. Within Facebook, there are many, many, many opportunities to market. And how you choose to market will depend upon um, your objectives, your target market, your products and services. It will also depend upon uh, who you've got in-house, what their capability is, uh, what your budget is. There's so many things that will influence uh, which techniques are right for you. And even when you get into Facebook, it's do you do a page? Do you do a profile? Do you do targeted advertising? Do you participate in groups? Um, do you participate in applications? There's so many different opportunities and there's no, uh, there's no right formula. It is going to depend upon you, your operation, your target markets, your budgets, your staff, and all those types of things. So we'll talk about that as we go through the whole series that I'm going to do on, uh, on social media and uh, Facebook in particular. Uh, that will be starting in uh, in January. So with uh, with your traffic, with generating a traffic strategy, what has always been the case in the last, you know, for the last 10 years, you have had to have a strategy to generate traffic to your website. You've had to, uh, and within that strategy, what is not documented doesn't doesn't get done. So you needed to have a documented strategy. You needed to decide what you were going to do. Was it e-zine advertising? Was it participation in e-zines? Was it uh, using your own private mail list to participate? Was it um, uh, news group marketing? Was it you know what? Was it search engine optimization? Was it um, uh, advertising in the search engines? So you needed to decide what it was that you were going to do. Uh, who was going to do it? Was it going to be done in house or was it going to be outsourced? How often it was going to be done? You had to quantify what success was. So we're going to do this to what end? What are we trying to accomplish here? And then you had to have a way to be able to measure whether or not uh, you were being successful with that particular technique. Now, the same is true today. You still need to have that documented plan. The only thing is that now we have to add an additional social media strategy. And again, with social media, it follows the same process. You need to have a documented plan because what is not documented doesn't get done. You need to decide which social media venues are right for you. And that's going to be based upon objectives, target markets, products and services, uh, your staff, um, their knowledge and their education. It'll result, it'll also depend upon how much time they've got and what your budget is. So which social media venues are most appropriate for you? Which element within that social media venue? So an example, if Facebook is right, which element? Is it the advertising? Is it groups? Is it the page? exactly what element, um, who's going to do it, what exactly are they going to do, um, how is that going to be done, how often is it going to be done, what success are you looking for, and you need to quantify it 
because unless you quantify it, you can't know whether or not it's working for you. And then you need to have some measurement mechanism. So having that strategy, again, it's always been the case. Has, has everybody done it? No. <laughs> uh, and now we've got this whole social media added to it. So it's ever more important to have that documented traffic generation strategy. We'll talk about uh, how to develop that in a, in a later session. So we've got this formula for e-business success. A lot of the traditional things are still important, but now we've got additional elements within those that are extra, uh, that are extras that need to be contended with as well. Uh, future, you know, whatever's going to happen in the future is always is already happening today in some way, shape, or form. So what do I see in the next uh, year or so? Uh, we're going to continue to see uh, audio and video explosion. I mean, if you look at the amount of video that's being used and how easy it is to integrate video into your website, and, uh, and also seeing how much it influences buyers' decision, particularly in the tourism industry, um, you know, we're going to see that just continue to explode and the opportunities. Um, you know, today, today a lot of people are participating in YouTube, uh, but through to, to Mogul, as an example, there's a way to syndicate that content, upload it once, and then have it appear on a number of different uh, video channels. So we're going to continue to see the audio and video explosion. Um, we're also going to see the continued social explosion. Uh, more and more opportunities within the existing social media sites. We're going to see new social media sites as well that are going to have an impact on you being able to market uh, online. Um, the uh, mobile, again, that is something that, um, that is uh, another thing that's going to explode even more over the next year. Uh, augmented reality is one that I see in particular uh, being uh, of, of great importance to the travel and tourism industry. And uh, with augmented reality, here's just an example. You can, uh, with the augmented reality applications, you can take your, uh, your phone, your iPhone, and you can scan a particular geographic area with your camera. And uh, it will show what particular businesses, what restaurants, what hotels, etc., uh, are in that screen capture area because it integrates the GPS uh, with this application. Now, where this is going and where it will continue to explode is that not only will it identify the hotels and the restaurants, but uh, you will see more and more people, uh, you'll see more and more additional content in there as well. You'll see people rating. Uh, recommending specific dishes in the restaurant. Um, you'll see different coupons appearing and those types of things. So we're going to see this whole area explode over the next uh, year, couple of years. Um, we're already seeing uh, quite a quite a bit. A lot of uh, I was in uh, Europe for all of September and I had my iPad with me, and it had a number of applications that I used to decide where we were going to stay and which restaurants we were going to use and those types of things. Um, you know, absolutely fantastic information. Uh, and again, you're relying upon third parties, even though you don't know who they are, their opinion matters to you because you assume that they're people just like you. Again, important for, for tourism operators to know what's being said about you and to be able to take advantage of this medium as well. If there's an opportunity for you to put a coupon up there and your competitors in the nearby area don't know about this, uh, that puts you a step ahead and at an advantage. Um, and again, if you're a destination marketing organization, um, providing education out to your tourism operators so that they're all playing this game uh, can, be, can be very important. Um, you know, here's another example of the augmented reality. Uh, sauce box is a restaurant, uh, 86, and I'm pointing at the sauce box here, 86% of people who have evaluated sauce box like it. Uh, it gives 86% like it, it's Asian food, it, the price point, how far away from me it actually is, and then I can click on that blue button and I can have access to lots of other information. Uh, the menu, their hours of operation, their telephone number, all of those types of things. Um, so again, this is an area that we're going to see explode over the next, uh, over the next few years. Um, voice recognition and uh, voice over IP. Uh, this is an area that I'm surprised we haven't seen more of at this point. What I envision is that when I come in in the morning, I'll be able to put on um, a wireless Bluetooth uh, headphone that's going to connect to my, uh, to my computer. 
And instead of typing in um, a particular address, I'll just be able to say that address and it will take me to that specific site. Voice over IP, telephone over the internet, we've seen Skype grow over the last number of years. Um, I expect that we're going to be able to, to uh, do more and more of the voice over IP. So that when I go into Google, I do a Google search, and when I find the site that I want, I'll be able to say just um, call Hilton. And it will, from the results in the search, it'll be able to call the number that's identified uh, with that particular search result. Uh, mobile commerce, I see that as uh, an area that's going to uh, really take hold. Mobile commerce where you can buy through your cell phone. Uh, it's already been around in Europe for years where you can download uh, virtual cash to your cell phone and then you can point your cell phone at a, a parking meter or a, a pop machine and, and make your purchase with your cell phone. Um, another, another area that I see as being really uh, something that's going to uh, change over the next couple of years is uh, LBS, the location-based services. Uh, most phones are equipped with email, text, uh, GPS. And so based upon where you are physically, as long as you say, yes, I want to receive these, uh, I want to receive these uh, coupons or specials, uh, you will re be receiving texts and, and uh, those types of things to your cell phone. So it'll say, you know, when you're passing by Starbucks, it'll say uh, two for one special for the next hour at Starbucks and you'll be able to take advantage of it. Um, you know, there are a number of things that are already happening in with progressive organizations. Um, last, uh, last, around this time last year, I was over in, um, in South Beach in Miami and I went to the Armani store. And when I went to check out, uh, the gal said, do you have a code? And I said, a code? And she said, yeah, if you uh, text this particular number, you'll get a code back that'll give you 10% off your purchase. Well, I like getting 10% off my purchase. So I texted um, uh, Armani, immediately got back an autoresponder, got an automatic response back, and I showed that code to the person at the checkout who put that code in, and then I got 10% off my purchase. And of course, uh, every week or every couple of weeks, I've been getting now uh, uh, promotions from Armani. I mean, makes sense. They know I'm, they know I'm a customer. Uh, they know that I've purchased from them in the past. A purchaser is likely to make another purchase. They're getting their target market, and then they're promoting to them and giving them a reason uh, to go back and purchase more. So I think we're going to see a whole lot more in this location-based services, whether it just be ads or whether they take it uh, to the next level. But we're going to see a lot of changes, a lot of them related to, uh, to mobile over the, next, uh, over the next year or two. So this brings us to the end of the uh, formal part of, our, uh, of, of this session on the past, present, and future trends of tourism marketing. I hope that you've gotten a few uh, good tips, tools, techniques, and resources. Um, if you want to um, have somebody else participate in this program, uh, it's being recorded. You can go into eLearningU and have access to this and a whole range of other courses that are available uh, through our online training portal. Uh, so thank you very much for participating and I hope to see you again at uh, some future live webinar. Thank you.